the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a program of mystery with Vincent Price as your host. Here's a preview. Nobody's seen hiding a hair of Beauregard Henshaw. You two know it. Now, Mr. Henshaw. You think we're hiding him here on the farm? You want to search like you did before? You didn't find him here then, and you won't find him here now. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. This is Vincent Price. Security, security. Report to nurse's station on Ward D. You're in a mental ward at a psychiatric hospital somewhere in the northwest. The man running towards you is Matthew Henshaw, age 40, father of one of the mental patients, one of the unpredictable, violent ones. Did they find him, Pa? No. No, they didn't find him. We're in big trouble, Davy. I told him when they took him away. He wouldn't stay locked up in here. We've got to find him, Davy, before they do. He's liable to kill somebody. That boy's crazy enough to do anything. Anything. On January 9th of this year, Beauregard Henshaw, aged 19, escaped from the Deerfield County Psychiatric Hospital. The police have an all-points bulletin out on him. He is considered dangerous. And desperately hoping to find him before anyone is hurt, are his father and brother. The chase has begun, and that's only the beginning of our story. Sears Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week Brought to you in Elliot Lewis, production of the Sears Radio Theater. Our story, A Game of Cat and Mouse, by Ralph Goodman. Our star, Tyler McVeigh. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Today, in our modern cities, we speak freely of phobias, neurotic dependence, and unexplained psychotic behavior. Set back in the primitive foothills of Deerfield County, there is a mental hospital, a fortress, where dangerous patients are locked up. Beauregard Henshaw, 19, has escaped from this fortress. He is out, on the loose, on the run. It's been almost a week since his father, Matt Henshaw, and his brother, Davy, have seen or heard from him. And during that week, the police have also been searching. Hey, Pa! Pa! Over here, Davy. You finish your chores? Uh, no, no, not yet, Pa. You better come in the house. What for? There are two men asking for you. What for? Oh, don't get mad at me, Pa. I didn't send for them. Who are they? They're the police. <laughs> No, I haven't seen Bo. Neither's my son. I told him that, Pa. I'm talking, Davy. Oh, I'm sorry, Pa. Nobody's seen hiding a hair of Beauregard Henshaw. You two know it. Now, Mr. Henshaw. You think we're hiding him here on the farm? You want to search like you did before? You didn't find him here then, and you won't find him here now. All the lieutenant is trying to do. I know what the lieutenant is trying to do. Same thing I've been trying to do. Find my son. But for different reasons. I'm sure we're both concerned that he might hurt somebody. Uh, your son is unstable. He has a tendency to get violent at the slightest... I thing. know my son. I know how to handle him. But they wouldn't let me. They took him away from me. Locked him up like an animal. You folks are worrying about how my son might hurt someone. Well, I know how scared you are of him. I'm more worried when you find him, you might hurt him. They already did. They had him strapped down in that house. Shut up, Davy. But, uh... I guess I'll go out and finish my chores. In a minute, son. We're not through with the questions yet. Yes, you are. You city folks think because I live out here on a farm with cows and chickens, I don't know my rights. Well, I know my rights. You want to know something? You bring me and Davy in for questioning. Official-like. You want to search this farm of mine? Get yourself a search warrant. Not like the last time. I talked to a lawyer. Now get off my property. All right, Mr. Henshaw. We'll leave. But, Lieutenant... Please. Sergeant, Sergeant, when the man's right, he's right. Oh. Come on, before he decides to charge us with trespassing. There's the door, Lieutenant. Uh, yeah, yeah, I see it. Uh, well, we'll be back, Mr. Henshaw, with that search warrant you asked for. Yeah, I'm sure you will. We've got to find that boy, Davy. 
There must be some place he run to. Some place he's hiding out. Like like a child waiting for us to How? Is that you, Pa? Oh. Yeah? It's me, Pa. Oh. Oh, where are you? I killed a woman, Pa. What? I said I killed a woman. Get out there and see if them fellas are gone. Hurry. Sure, Pa. Oh. Oh, you still there? Yeah, Pa. Now, now tell me. Where are you? County seat. I came to see the fair. I I met this woman. She was nice at first, but then when I told her I was going to be a race car driver at the fair, she laughed at me. Bo. Oh, where's your room? What street? Fifth Street, Pa. Fifth and Main. Upstairs. She's dead, Pa. What am I gonna do? Now, now, you listen to me, Bo. Is there a park near there? Yeah, right across the square. Now, 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 take the body and wrap it in a sheet. And when it gets dark... Bring it across the square and bury it deep. There's soft ground around them city trees. But, Pa... It's going to take me and your brother a while to get there. I want that all done before we arrive. You understand me, Bo? Bo? <laughs> yes, Pa. Then go back to your room and wait for us. Hear me, Bo? Your brother and I are coming to get you. All right, Pa. I'll do like you say... But hurry, Pa. Please, hurry. I don't understand it. I, I told him we'd be here to town to pick him up. He said he'd wait, and his stuff's all moved out of his room. He's run again. We'd better run, too, out of this town. There's police all over the place, Pa. That's a big city. He'll get used to the noises. That police car ain't coming this way. No one knows about the killing yet, if there was a killing. You know how that brother of yours likes to play act, tell fanciful stories? Hey, Pa, you heard that landlady. Mo was the quietest young man she ever rented to. Been here a week, not a speck of trouble. There wasn't even a sign of a fight in that room. But he's gone, Pa. He paid his rent, too. Every red cent. Where'd he get the money? I don't know. A job. That's where he got the money. bo has got a job. Here in this town. Doing what? The same thing he's done at Grover's Corners. Working in a gas station or a garage. You know how your brother likes to tinker with cars? Oh, that's the truth. Nobody can fix cars like Bo. He always loved cars, especially them fast, sporty jobs. That's right. That's why he come here. Huh? Look up there at that sign. What's it say? Uh, County Fair Speedway. Uh, National Car Race Competition. He come to see the races, Davy. Or worse, he come to be in them. What? On the phone. He said something about being a race car driver. I told you that. That's right. That's why he killed that woman for making fun Keep of him. Keep your voice down. We ain't here to attract attention. We're here to find Bo. You, you don't think he's crazy enough to get into one of them race cars on the speedway? That brother of yours is liable to do almost anything. You know that? We better start looking for him, Davy. And we better find him. Fast. It's normal for a parent to be protective of a child And somehow the more difficult the child's position The more trouble the child is in The more protective the parent becomes Bo was in trouble and it was not just his father and brother who were looking for him. The police also had an interest in his case. What do you think about, Lieutenant? That Henshaw case. I wish we'd gone out there with that search warrant before we warned Henshaw we'd be back. Yeah, I guess you're right. He and his son flew the coop like frightened chickens. But we went over that place with a fine tooth comb. No sign that that crazy son of his was ever there. I'm beginning to think the boy is not as crazy as reported. 
He's managed to avoid capture for a week now. Five units have been alerted. Ten good men are out looking for him full time. Oh, you're doing the best you can, Lieutenant. Which isn't too good. One lead in seven days. One lousy lead. Some landlady whose boarder skipped out and stole a bed sheet last night. And his name happens to be Bo. Doesn't even know his last name. Never bothered to ask. <laughs> they don't make nosy landladies like they used to, do they? Yes, not. Uh, the ruin house up ahead. She said the boy checked in a week ago. Keep your fingers crossed. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. What? There. Across the street. On that street corner in front of the gas station. Yeah? Isn't that Henshaw? Matt Henshaw. The boy's father, eh? It sure looks like him. It's him, all right. How can anyone forget a face like that? He seems to be waiting for someone. Oh, maybe? With a little luck. Turn off your engine. Want me to pick him up? On what charge? No, no, no. Let's let's just see what he's up to first. There's no rush to check out that lead at the boarding house. It's cold. If Bo was there, he skipped out hours ago. There's someone waving at Henshaw coming this way. That would be Daisy. Right. Dog tired and out of breath. Henshaw didn't come to town for nothing. Old car just like him never do. Is he looking for his boy? I'm over here, Davy. I see you, Pa. Did you have any luck? No. You? No. I've been all over this town. Well, so have I. So have I. I know it, Pa. It's just that they got so many gas stations. It's a big city. Bo's out there somewhere. I just know he is. We got to find him, Davy. That uh, body he buried last night ain't going to go unnoticed forever. Yes, Pa. Once the police find that, they're going to shoot him down for sure. Well, how, how are we going to find him, just Pa? Just keep doing what we're doing. But we're running out of gas stations. And we'll start checking garages. We're going to keep going until we find your brother. Now, you check the north side of the street, and I'll check the south side. We ain't far from that rooming house he was staying in. If he was working anywhere, it was probably somewhere nearby. Yes, Pa. See, it's uh, 10 o'clock. We'll give it another hour. I'll meet you back here. Okay, Pa. They're splitting up, Lieutenant. Yeah, probably doing the same thing we're doing, looking for a bow. That woman house lead, and now Henshaw. I have a feeling the boy's here, Sergeant. Let's get over to that room and house and see what we can find out. Right. I hope something breaks soon. Henshaw is no fool. If we don't keep one jump ahead of him, we may lose the boy forever. Davy. Davy. Oh, yeah, Pa. I see you. I, I went back to that gas station to wait for you, but you weren't there. Never mind that. I got us a lead. I found someone who's seen Bo. You have? Where? One of them garages. The first one I tried. This man there, he recognized the picture of Bo. The one I've been showing at all the gas stations? Yeah, and? Bo was in asking for a job. And he sent him over to a friend of his. Casey's Garage. He says Bo is working there. Yippee! Now, take it easy. We ain't found him yet. I, I'm headed for Casey's Garage right now. I want you to go back to the motel and wait. The motel? Yeah. Uh, here, here's the key. I got us a room in that place down the street. You can, you can see it from here. Starwood Motel, room 104. We may have to hide out in there. But, Pa... Now, stop asking questions and get... Well, I'm just worried about you going to talk to Bo alone. You know how he gets sometimes. It takes the two of us to... I to said hold... get. Stop pretending you're worried about your brother. You're hoping we don't find him. That's not true, Pa. You're jealous of Bo. Always was think I'm more partial to him than I am to you. When you know I treat you both equal. Well, don't I? Yes, Pa. Well, don't matter. As long as you keep it in your mind, I ain't never going to let them take Bo back to that hospital. No matter how crazy or dangerous they think he is. Never. <laughs> the police. Who will find the elusive Bo first? Matt Henshaw, the boy's stubborn, unyielding father, insists that his son is harmless and can be soothed and calmed if approached and taken by him. Matt Henshaw hopes he's right, because if he's not, he could end up dead wrong. Mr. 
Mr. Casey? Mr. Casey? Ah, oh, it's you, Bo. Late again, huh? I can't work here no more, Mr. Casey. Can't get my pay. Your pay? I've only been working here a week. I know that, but i got to leave. Hey, what happened to your face? It's all scratched up. I don't want to talk about that. I just came to get my pay. Now, give me it. Okay, okay, you're entitled to it. But remember, I gave you an advance. When you came to work here, money so you could get yourself a room, huh? Give me what's left. You in some kind of trouble, Bo? No, I want my pay now. Look, I don't even know how much it is now. Besides, Bo, I don't keep cash around here. You know that. Stop making excuses. I want it now. Bo, let go. You're choking me. I'll give you your money. I'll give you your money. I go. What's the matter with you? Are you crazy? Don't you say that. Oh, the way you've been acting, I just don't like anyone making a fool out of me. Like that girl. Girl? What girl? Never mind, never mind. Just give me my money so I can leave. Sure. Sure, Bo. But you'll, you'll have to give me some time. Look, I'll call my accountant. you make up a check for you. You come back at uh, 2 o'clock, right after lunch. You'll be waiting. Okay? Well, I've got to buy some racing gloves and goggles anyway. Racing gloves? So I can be in the base at that fair. Oh, sure. Sure. Now, you, you, you do that. Go out and do your shopping. And when you come back, your check will be waiting. At 2 o'clock? 2 o'clock. I promise. Okay. I'll be back. It had better be here. Bo! Bo! Is that you, Bo? Hey, wait a minute, Mr. Oh, gotta stop that boy. What's he done? Don't let go of my arm. He's getting away. Bo! Bo! Now you've done it. He's run off again. Now I'll never find him. Are you from the police? Huh? Oh. Oh, no. No, I, I, I'm not from the police. I, I mean... The boy, he, he hasn't done anything. Well, the way you ran after him. Oh, well, you, you see, the, the boy's a runaway from home. He ran off to the city uh, to see the fair. Oh, teenage runaway. Yeah, yeah. Like I say, nothing to involve the police. He, I'm his father. Henshaw's the name, Matt Henshaw. Oh. If you'd uh, give me a little information, maybe I can find him before uh, before his poor dear mother finds out about this. She's visiting her sister at Haynes Point. Break her heart if she knows the boy run off. Well, is that what this is all about? Yeah, yeah, that's all. Simple case of an adventure-seeking boy running off to the fair, leaving his chores to be done. Now, if you can give me some idea where I can find him. Oh, right here, Mr. Henshaw. You see, it's important that... Right here? Yes, sir. Who's well, been working here? He came in a little while ago all upset and said he was quitting. Oh? Yeah, I wanted his pay. I told him to be ready for him at 2 o'clock. Then, uh, you think he'll be back at 2? Oh, he'll be back, all right. Boy's dead broke. <laughs> Good thing you came along. He's in some kind of trouble, I think. Probably needs a father to talk to. Yeah. Well, you know how that is. Boys will be boys. He was uptight. Would you mind being here when he gets back? Well, now, I was about to suggest that very thing. I'm staying just up the street at the uh, Starwood Motel. Uh-huh. Uh, when Bo comes back, uh, the minute you see him coming, give me a call. Oh, I sure will. Thanks, Mr. Henshaw. Oh, no, thank you, Mr. Casey. You're the one who's doing me the favor. Returning my, uh, my little lost lamb. Well, I, uh, better be getting back to the motel and tell Davy, uh, my other son. He's been worried sick about his old brother. Uh, we'll be waiting for your call, Mr. Casey. Oh, I'll call, all right. You don't know how worried I was about that boy of yours. I had no idea who he was or where he came from. I was thinking all kinds of crazy things. Human nature, Mr. Casey. Human nature. See how life works out? Once we know the truth, the answer's simple. Real simple. <laughs> You told me not to open it for anybody but you. Did that Mr. Casey call? No, Pa, nobody called. And it's almost 1.30. What you got there? Trouble, Davy. Trouble. I, uh, just picked up the afternoon paper. Just came out. Look. Here. That looks like a picture of Bo. It's him, all right. One of them artist drawings. Not close enough for some damn fool to recognize. And this must be a picture of that girl he killed. There's the body they dug Will up you in. you hush up? 
They can carry you all the way down the hall. But it's right here in the afternoon Get paper, Pa. Oh. We're going over to that garage. But, Pa, the man didn't call yet. And, and, and if we wait around that garage and the police come by, they'll know for sure that we... They ain't coming by. Now, no one knows about Bo working in that garage except us. And that Mr. Casey. And he thinks Bo run away from home and we're coming down to get him. I know, Papa, but... I said get your coat. We'll go, Pa, we'll go. As soon as the man calls. It's only down the street. With this paper story out on the killing, we got to be careful. Yeah, I... I suppose you're right. For once in your life. I know I'm right. I, I know you don't listen to me much, but I try to help. Honest, I do. I want to find Bo just as much as you do. There's someone outside the door. Huh? Put that paper away. Get it out of sight. I'll go see who it is. But, 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 Pa, I... stop shaking like that. We ain't done nothing. It's your brother they're looking for. Oh, yes. Yes, Pa. I'll, I'll wait in the next room just in case there's some trouble. Yes? Who is it? Open up, Henshaw. It's the police. The police? Come on. We haven't got time for games. All right, all right. Just a minute. I thought that voice sounded familiar. What are you doing here in town, Lieutenant? Funny, we were about to ask you the same thing, weren't we, Sergeant? Yeah. Mind if we come in? Never knew a way of stopping you once you two had your mind made up. Where's your son, Davy? He's here in the other room. He's wary of strangers, country boy at heart like me. It's all right, Davy. You can come back in. We got nothing to hide. That way, Davy. No, Pop. We just came to see the fair. Right. Just came to see the fair. My boy just loves the fair. We go every year. Ain't that right, Davy? Look, we don't have time to match wit anymore, Henshaw. Last night, your son killed a woman. Now, that is serious. He knows, Lieutenant. I found this in the other room. Story's right here on the front page. I put that in the trash, Pa, like you said. Now, let's stop playing games, Henshaw. That son of yours is running around loose. There's no telling what he might do next. Now, if you have any idea where he well, is... I don't. Now, that's your job, ain't it, Lieutenant? Well, we both seem to be doing my job. That's what you came here for, isn't it? To find your son. We came to see the fair. Shut up, Davy. Well, maybe we know where he is and maybe we don't. If uh, we get him out of here and nobody else gets hurt, Will you call off the hunt? What are you trying to say? I'm saying what I've been saying to the law all along. We take care of our own. If they let me keep Bo, this never would have happened. Davy and me, we know how to handle them. That's not for the police to decide. Our job is to find them and bring them in. You settle the rest with the courts. Courts? That takes months, years. You put Bo back in that hospital and tie him down again and... Huh? Pa, it's two o'clock. Davy. Two o'clock? What does two o'clock to do with anything? I'm talking to you, Henshaw. You supposed to meet Bo somewhere, somewhere here in town at two o'clock? No. Henshaw, I don't know where Bo is. Davy and me, we're, we're here to see the fair. Now, you can ask over and over again, and you'll still get the same answer. We ain't seen Bo. We ain't heard from him, and we don't know where he is. Your phone is ringing, Henshaw. I hear it. Now, don't touch that phone, Davy. What are you afraid of? Nothing. Yes, you are. That phone call is a link to your son, Bo, isn't it? No. No one else knows you're here in town. It was pure chance we spotted you and found out where you were staying. Now, pick up that phone, Henshaw. No. I said pick up that phone. <laughs> A game of cat and mouse. Hello? Hello? Oh, there you are. I was trying to reach Mr. Henshaw. Well, this is the Starwood Motel, isn't it? Yes. Well, that's the part I don't understand. He must be there. He said he'd wait for my call. Look, would you do me a favor? Send someone up to his room. Tell him to get over here right away. I got a call from his son. The boy's going to be here any minute. He's a runaway. His father's anxious to find him. Yes? Casey's garage. It's right down the street. He knows where it is. 
Mr. Casey? Mr. Casey, it's me, Bo. I'm back. There's his son now. I'll try to hold him here. But please, tell him to hurry. Mr. Casey? Yeah, I'm here, Bo. I was in the office, getting your check ready for you. Oh, then it's here. Yes, I promised, didn't I? Then give me it. I gotta get over to the bank and get some cash. They wouldn't let me have those racing goggles and the gloves on credit. So you're going to be watching the big race, huh, Bo? Not watching, I'm gonna be in it. You know, I thought that's what you said last time. You mean you've entered a car in No, the... I haven't a car. I'm going to get a job at the Speedway, like I got here. This time, race car driver. But, Bo, you can't do that. They don't hire kids to be race car drivers. Yes, they do. You need a lot of experience to get behind the wheel of one of those competition cars. They go over 100 miles an hour. I got experience. Oh, not that kind of experience. You sound like her. Her? Oh, you mean your mother? I haven't got a mother. My mother died when I was little. She was no good anyways. Ran off twice and left us kids all alone. Then, who are you talking about? Never mind. Just give me my money. I want it, you hear? Sure. Sure, like I said, the check is all ready for you. So, wait here. It's on my desk in the office. I'll go get it for you. Okay. But make it fast. Right. Don't go away. I'll be right back. No, mother. Something funny going on here. Hello, operator. Get me the police. Hang it up! I said, hang it up. Sure, Bo. Sure. Anything you say. Now, move away from that phone. Okay. Okay, but you can put down that tire. Who were you calling just now? Who? I was I was calling your father, Bo. He and your brother. Uh, D- D- Davy, I think his name is. Yeah, Davy, that's it. They're here, Bo. They're looking for you. Pa and Davy? They're here? Yeah, that's right, Bo. No, they're not. I waited for them in my room, like they said, but they never came. They did, Bo. They're here. Now, if you'll just let me make that call. No, you weren't calling them. You don't know them. You were calling the police. About that girl I killed last night. What girl? I saw these papers on your workbench. I haven't seen the paper, Bo. Look, I, I just leave it there for customers. You come saw in. it. You've been playing cat and mouse with me, holding me here so you could call the police. No, Bo, no. I just came in to get your check. Then I thought I'd call your father and Liar! I... Liar! Look, Bo, look. There's your check. Right there on the desk. Take it. Go on, go on, take it. It's all yours. You can buy those race car goggles and the gloves and... I can't and... use a check. At the bank, they'll want identification. Someone there might know about me. I want cash. But I told you, we don't keep any cash here. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Right here in the desk. In this petty cash box. I saw it. And I saw this, too. This gun you keep in here. Oh, no, no, Bo, Bo. Be careful. That gun is loaded. Now, don't be a fool. I'm not. I'm not a fool. Don't you call me one. I don't like it when people call me a fool. Oh, give me the gun. But I said, give me that gun. Boy. Oh. I told you not to make fun of me. Now, I'm taking my money from your cash box, Mr. Casey. And I'm going to go to the fair. Too bad you can't be with me. I'm going to be in that big race, Mr. Casey, just like I said I was. And nobody's going to stop me. Not the police. Nobody. Now that I got this gun. Now look, Sonny, I told you there's no job open here at the Speedway for kids. Now stop following me around like a puppy. But Mr. Schultz, I... All right, bring number seven in. I want every inch of it checked over thoroughly. Mr. Schultz, Will I... you please get out of my way? Listen, who let you on this track anyway? Want to get killed? I'm not afraid out here. It's like I was born out here. I got nerves of steel. Sure, sure, but a body of bones and blood, and I don't want to see it... Splattered all over the track. I can take care of myself. Get Mr. those tires off. We go in ten minutes. Where's my driver? That's what I wanted to talk to you about, Mr. Schultz. Uh, I see there's no getting rid of you. All right, come on with me. Here in the repair shop, we'll talk. Maybe I can find something for a determined young man like you to do. Yahoo! I'm right behind you, Mr. Schultz. I knew if I came here, we'd be able to work something out. <laughs> Bo 
spot it out here, Lieutenant. He's just hanging around Bobby Dawson's pit stop. I hope this isn't another dead end. Uh, look, that race starts in a few minutes. Hey, wait it? a minute. Isn't that him over there going into the repair shop with Schultz, Dawson's crew chief? Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, quick. Round up that father and brother of his. They promised to help after they saw what he did to Casey. Here's their chance. Careful, Lieutenant. Remember, he's got a gun. Take off. I'll do what I can to hold him until you get back with his old man. You want a job here doing what? Well, would you repeat that, young man? I said I want a job as race car driver. I want to drive that car out there. Number seven. Because it's my lucky number. And I know I can win easy with it. <laughs> 25 years I've been around the speedways, and I thought I heard everything. But a young man of, uh, how old are you? 19. 19, who says he's a top-notch race car driver with probably 15 years' experience. Uh. Are you being funny? No, I'm not. You are. And I don't have time for this nonsense. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Schultz. Who are you? Where, where, where did you come from? Well, if the boy says he's a race car driver, well, maybe you ought to give him a chance to be in the race. What are you talking about? Well, I could take him over to the garage back there, you know, where you keep the test cars for, for young drivers who want to try out. What test cars? What are you talking about? Yeah, who are you, mister? I work with Mr. Schultz here. No, you don't. He don't know you. Stay where you are. The boy has a gun. Now, put it down, son. Nobody's going to hurt you. You're from the police, aren't you? Police? We're trying to help you, Bo. Help me back into that hospital. That's what you're trying to do. Give me the gun, Bo. You stay back. I'm warning you. Stay back or I'm going to shoot you. <laughs> oh, dear God. Mister, you, you shot him. I had no choice. Now, step back. No, you step back. Don't touch that boy. Henshaw, I'm sorry. I don't want to hear. Now move aside. You've done your filthy job. Now let me take care of my own. Oh. Oh. It's me, Bo. I've been looking for you all over. Bo, don't die on me. Please don't die on me. Sorry, Lieutenant. When he heard the son was in here, he ran. I, I couldn't keep up with him. It's all right, Chad. Where is he? Where's Bo? Stay back, Davy. He's been shot. Your brother's been shot, Davy. Help me pick him up. We'll lay him out on the table. I wouldn't do that if I were you, Henshaw. He's in no condition to be moved. Davy. Yes, Pa. I'll help you, Pa. Come on. You better call an ambulance, Chad. No. Don't you move. He's got the boy's gun. And I don't fool easy like Bo. Now, don't you move, Lieutenant. Or I'll blow your head off. And sure, if we don't get that boy to a hospital... No hospitals! Bo ain't going back to no more hospitals. Now, throw your guns on the floor so Davy can pick them up. Now, both of you. Go get him, Davy. Yes, Pa. That's it. Now, bring him over here. I'll see what I can do for Bo. Meantime... You keep both those guns pointed at them murderers. Hmm? Yeah, Pa. If Bo dies... Uh, pa, the race... The big race... Did it... Did it start yet? No, Bo. Now, now you just rest easy. Uh, Your brother and me, we're... We're gonna get you out of here. Uh, I'll... Uh, I'll get me some towels and stop some of that bleeding. Uh, baby... There's a phone on the wall in the other room. Let one of us go. We'll call an ambulance. No. If you don't, that brother of yours will die for sure. Let him. After what he's done, let him. Pa, I... I uh, I'm coming, Bo. I, I got the towels and I... Bo. Bo. Lieutenant, he... He stopped breathing. It's no use, Henshaw. Your son is dead. By your hand... An eye for an eye, saith the Lord. The deeds of the wicked shall not go unpunished. Davy, I want you to point that gun at this child slayer and kill him. But, but, Pa. I said kill him. I can't, Pa. You can't. You can't. What can you do? I'm going to let these fellas go. No, Davy, no. They'll just come after us like they did poor Bo. 
If we kill him now, we can run, Davy. We can run. Run? Where? It's no use running, Pa. I'm... I'm going to give them back their guns. No, Davy, no! I'm sorry, Pa. But... But Bo is gone. And nothing's changed. Here you are, Lieutenant. You got nothing to worry about no more. My father and me... We ain't going nowhere. Seems like... He never was. Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. A Game of Cat and Mouse was written by Ralph Goodman, produced and directed by Elliot Lewis. Your host was Vincent Price. Our star was Tyler McVeigh. Featured in the cast were Byron Kane, John Shea, Lou Horn, Barney Phillips, William Lally, and Bill Zucker. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. This is Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliott Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. CBS News. President Carter and leaders of six other industrialized nations are meeting at this hour in Tokyo in an economic summit conference. The fuel shortage is a major topic. This is John Bohannon reporting on the CBS radio network. One purpose of the conference is to try to resolve differences among all seven nations on how to cope with the world's oil crisis. President Carter is described as tired and angry. Aides say he's weary because of the pace of his visit to Japan for the economic summit conference and seething with anger over accusations by French President Giscard d'Estaing that the U.S. has done virtually nothing to save oil and relieve the pressure on world oil prices. Mr. Carter is said to be even more angry over Giscard's published comment that the U.S. has been responsible for the lack of progress in American and Soviet relations. Mr. Carter will visit South Korea this weekend, but he's canceling plans to take a vacation in Hawaii. Administration officials say the president will return to Washington on Sunday. One White House aide is quoted as saying officials are concerned about how it would look for the president to be relaxing on a beach while many Americans wait in line for gasoline. The aide is quoted as saying he'd like to spend a few days in Hawaii, but he'd also like to see Mr. Carter re-elected. The OPEC meeting in Geneva means higher crude oil prices. That story and other news in a moment. Ministers from the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries are expected to meet again tomorrow in Geneva. After adjourning for the night, word came that the ministers apparently had agreed on a compromise plan to raise crude oil prices between $20 to $23.50 a barrel. Saudi Arabia would be the only exception, selling its crude at around $18 a barrel. Some experts say this would raise the prices of U.S. gasoline pumps by about four cents a gallon. The strike by independent truckers began nationwide a week ago. There are now indications it may be near an end. Truckers have lifted their blockades in Arizona and Connecticut and have agreed to go back to work in Louisiana and Kentucky. Truckers are also back in Nebraska. More from Bob Thaw. For Midwestern meat packers, the situation improved. So many striking truckers returned to work that several packers could resume near-normal operations and recall workers laid off when the plants couldn't get enough trucks. At the Omaha stockyard, the decline in cattle volume was smaller than it had been, Truckers agree more rigs seem to be rolling now on Midwestern highways. Strikers are starting to come back because they can't afford not to. With bills piling up and no money coming in, some strikers have very little choice. Said one, face facts. Either you run your truck or the bank reclaims it. Truckers concede unhappily that as more strikers go back to work, more will follow. So many packing company executives think the worst may be over. And that normal slaughter and delivery of beef will resume sometime next week. Bob Fall, CBS News, Schuyler, Nebraska. Salt 2, Other Views. That's the title of a CBS News special report broadcast tonight offering a response to President Carter's report to the Congress on June 18th following the Salt 2 agreement with Russia. One of those opposing the treaty is Senator Mark Hatfield, a Republican from Oregon. The United States and the Soviet Union are roughly equal today in the overall strategic balance. Since we are equal, we must ask one simple question. Why should the American public be forced to pay billions of dollars in the next decade to make the world a far more dangerous place to live? The answer is, we should not. Another Republican, the GOP leader in the Senate, Howard Baker of Tennessee, warns both President Carter and Soviet President Brezhnev to accept significant changes in the SALT II agreement 
or risk Senate rejection. John Bohannon, CBS News.